In today's live stream, we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of heparin. So you all know that heparin is a glycosaminoglycan. Glycosaminoglycans, if you see, they are linear, unbranched repeats of disaccharide. So in heparin, the repeat is made up of hydronic acid and glucosamine. This can be glucuronic acid also. Okay, either hydronic acid or glucuronic acid. Glycosaminoglycan. See, glycosaminoglycan. Okay, so this is your aminoglycan. This is your glycose. That is why this is glycosaminoglycan. And they are sulfated and acetylated. Okay. So now you know the structure of glycosaminoglycan. In heparin, if you see, there are some sequences unique. Okay. So this unique sequence is known as antithrombin pentasaccharide binding site. So pentasaccharide means 5 residues. Okay. 5 sugar residues. See, N-acetyl, glucosamine, hydronic acid, this is glucuronic acid and the sulfation, the number of sulfation will be different. See here it is 2 years, here it is 3 years. The number of sulfation is different in different residues. Okay. You should know that heparin contains a unique 5 residue structure which is going to bind to antithrombin. Okay. Heparin releases lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme which is located in the capillary endothelium. Okay, it is attached to the endothelium. See, this is your endothelial cell. This is the surface. And this lipoprotein lipase is in the lumen. Okay, it is in the capillary lumen. It is attached to the endothelial surface by heparin sulfate okay both are different heparin is different heparin sulfate is different you should know this okay their comp uh, composition and the sulfation pattern is different okay heparin can come and release lipoprotein lipase from its binding site that is heparin sulfate so heparin will come and release the lipoprotein lipase okay what is the importance of knowing this point there are two important importance if you want to see the activity of lpl okay patients who are deficient of lipoprotein lipase okay so for them how are you going to assess the activity give them heparin lpl will be released if it is present then you can see the activity in vitro okay so this is in the diagnostic test one more importance is heparin gives falsely high free t3 and t4 why for a person if he has been injected heparin what will happen his lipoprotein lipase will be released now lipoprotein lipase will Hydrolyze the breakdown of Tg to free fatty acid. Okay. This free fatty acid will go and bind to albumin. Okay. And other proteins. So, this free fatty acid will replace T3 and T4 from the binding sites. Okay. So, you will get a falsely high free t3 free t4 because now the free t3 free t4 is high okay clear now let's come to the anticoagulant action this is antithrombin antithrombin inhibits the coagulation okay so it is going to inhibit so many factors this antithrombin in this conformation is not that much active okay so to activate antithrombin heparin is needed heparin will come and bind to the that site i told you right pentasaccharide sequence 
So this pentasaccharide binding sequence will bind to antithrombin. Now it is in a favorable conformation. Okay. Now antithrombin can bind to thrombin and it can mediates it anticoagulant action. Okay. So heparin is normally present in the body. Okay. It is present inside the muscles. It is even produced by liver. Okay. So this is the biochemical basis of anticoagulant action. Heparin potentiates the action of antithrombin. Okay. So now let us discuss how we are going to treat heparin poisoning. Heparin is negatively charged. This we know, right? Okay. There are a lot of sulfates. So it is negatively charged. So now you add some positively charged protein. That is your protamine sulfate. Okay. Protamine sulfate. So, if you give protamine sulfate, it will form an inactive ionic complex with heparin. Okay. So, protamine sulfate is the antidote for heparin. Okay. So, this is the biochemical basis.